So let me take this out here for just a minute. And it looks like I'm gonna have to raise that up a little bit. So maybe. So you can see uh, on this one that first of all, there is no false rim. I just didn't feel like you needed it, okay? And you can also tell on this by looking at it is it's periodically it has these double wraps. That's what holds the inner wall and the outer wall together. Some of them have three, some of them have two. Just depends on how I hit it. So, but if you look on the outside, the double wraps are here. So, and because I didn't need a double wrap right there, I didn't use it to go around. But at this point, I did need it. I don't know exactly why I didn't do that, but I did need it to secure it. So I'm doing the double wraps or trying to do the double wraps on an area where there is a space in between these. So here's a double wrap. There's the space. And you can see it all went all the way around. Same thing here then. Here's a double wrap and up here. And actually I started it from underneath. So it looks like three wraps. But in the front, it looks like two, okay? And there is a graph on your pattern that shows you kind of how this whole thing works, all right? And it does behoove you to read it over first. Basically what we're gonna do is we're doing the design part on the outside and you're just doing the double wrap on the inside, okay? But you wanna follow the pattern so let me show you what I have set up. Now, what I did is I went ahead and I soaked my rim and then I went around and shaped it. Mm, I need to go up a little higher. That's a little better. Okay, so I went around and shaped it. Now, what I want to show you is right now I've just gotten held by clips. Uh, if I would have been smart, I would have done this last night so it would have all been dried. Right now it's wet so that I can crimp on it a little bit with my hands and ensure the shape that I want. Okay, if it's dry, can't do that. All right. So if I would have done this yesterday and let this dry, I could just take it off and put it to the side. Um, it's still a little damp, not bad. What I wanna show you is where I put the starts on these, okay? So the inside one is over on a corner on a long side, okay? Because I didn't want the bulk on a short side where I normally would put it. And also then the start of this on the outside is on a long side. And the reason for that is, is you need some space when you're trying to connect this at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna take off that outer layer because I'm gonna need that to start. Now, you can do one of two things. If this doesn't work for you, you can always take zip ties or tie wraps, whatever you wanna call them, and zip tie that inner rim on and then just cut it off as you go. You can't do that with this because you're making your design on it, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to put my warp on the front of the basket. And this takes, let me take three stakes for the design. So I'm going to take some more of that, three sixteenths, take three pieces. Be the prettiest pieces on that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't like that color combination right off the bat, so I'm going to change it around. And that's more than long enough, so I can pull that up a little bit and cut that off. So these stay dry. They're part of the warp. And um, so if you were weaving, a warp would be what you're weaving on and your weaver would be your weft. And the only reason I can remember this is because you weave from right to weft. 
There you go. All right, so I need one more clip to get this started with. I'm gonna grab a small one. I've got my cane right now. I've got it open. I gotta cut that out so you can really understand what I'm talking about. And all I wanna do is just hold that temporarily with a clip until I get my cane. And then I'm gonna wrap around it and I'll show you what we're gonna do here. First thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it. We're gonna put a tail on it so it doesn't come out and we're gonna wrap it. Oh, I show this on this or not? I do not. Um, we're gonna wrap it for eh, maybe three or four times. Then we can take that out when we come around to it and then just meet that uh, weave and make it look like, oh, let's see. So this is where, this is, believe it or not, this is my ending here. See how I, I staggered these guys and I just kept going with the pattern. Now I should probably cut that off, but it was easier for me to see. So you can't really see a difference in that. And that's what we're shooting for, okay? So on this overlap here, when we get to the end of this, we want this to look fluid. So I'll probably cut that back a little bit, but I always cut long as I can turn it up, but I can't make it grow. Okay, so when you are using cane, uh, I don't keep it in that long. I want it supple, yes. But, um, and I'm gonna be, you know, cane has a, has a shiny side, it's hard to see this, and a dull side, a dull flat side. You want the flat side in and the shiny side out on this. You don't have to do it that way. Sometimes it turns, it's all not a big deal. But to start out, that's what we're gonna go with. So I'm gonna change this so it's sitting in my lap because I can't do it while I'm standing up. So let me make some shifts here. Move the camera around and stick it in my lap. Because I am a lap weaver. So, as always, anytime you're starting something, it tends to be a little um, cumbersome at the start. Like where that's at. So let's turn this a little bit. Hold on just a second while I make my adjustments. Let's see how that works. Hmm. Loose. All right. That's better. So let me find my over here. And what I want to do, my three pieces, right? I think it's not putting them very good together. I'm going to take this across the back diagonally, okay? And then, oops, sorry, I'm going to take it across the back diagonally this way so that I can wrap on it so it'll hold. And I'm just going to do this for about, let's say, four rows. Making sure that I don't twist my cane. One thing I did want to show you that I forgot about. So let me clip this here. I didn't really show you how you get it on there. Yes, I wanted it relatively dry when I started. So I'm gonna clip that for just a minute. I did save a piece. So let me show you what I do. So I want this then down on the overlap, maybe two inches. So I use an X-Acto because then I never have to worry about having a sharp knife or finding somebody that can sharpen it for me. All I gotta do is put a new blade in. You wanna make sure that you cut away from yourself, okay? You move the material and not the knife. And that way you'll never cut yourself. Thank you, Scott Gilbert, who taught me that making oak baskets. I used to have mine all over the place. So keep your knife stationary, move your material. 
Okay, so that's pretty thinned out. And what I want to show you, I know this is already on here, but what I do when I'm doing this, let's say I wanted it right there. Okay. When I come around here then to get that crease where I want it, I'll bend that and then it's perfect. Okay. And I'll do the same thing all the way around and then I'll thin the other side of the overlap and, and stick it in there. And I like doing those early and letting them dry. Did I do that this time? No, but in a perfect world, it would have been done. All right, so now I am looking at my pattern. Let's see what the heck it says to do. So it looks like on the first ones here, I am gonna be over, this is the black ones, right? So this is a double wrap and I'll do that here to start just to secure it. Uh, and then the first one is just over the first stake for two rows of that. And then we go two for two rows and we go three for two rows and that digresses. And then we do it again. But this next time then it's upside down. That's all it is. Okay, so once you get in a groove, it's not hard to see. But um, then if you need it too, so there's the diagram and then there's also the breakdown here. And it says over three for the first two rows. And then it's over one under two for three and four and then five and six, it's over two under one. So whichever venue works best for you here, I'm more of a graph person. Some people need to read it. So we all learn differently. So we have it for both ways, but it's the same information. It's just presented differently. How's that? Okay, so we need to get this bad boy on here. So what I wanna do is look where I have a gap. Start out with, and it looks like that gap is like back here would be a good place to wrap that, which means I'm up too far and I'm gonna bring this back a little bit and start again. So something to consider. I don't know if I can shift it down or not. Nope. That's a sign of a good weave though, so I'm not complaining. I can loosen this up a little bit and bring it down. I want that first wrap, those two wraps to be in this slot right there. In that slot. We could do it here too, but then it's too far over. We're gonna go for this slot right here, okay? So I'm gonna open that up a little bit with my awl, or not my awl, I weave right or weave right of sorts. So I've got a hole in there. It's not helping me much with that in the way. So I'm gonna move that. So I want a hole in there. That's where my two is gonna go, okay? And I'm gonna back this up so that that happens. So I'm gonna go around everything. This is what I think. You really need a fid. And I don't have a fid, but I sure wish I did. So I'm gonna open this up. What I do is open it up and turn it sideways and then I don't have to fight with it. There it is. So I wanna go around this twice and I'm going in the same hole. This I'm gonna let flop because I'm gonna incorporate it later, I think. There we go. All right, sorry. So I have all three of them here. I have one go around. I want two to go in the same hole to start with. Believe it or not, we will get going here. <clears throat> all right. So I'm gonna take my awl, open it up. And if you leave it in there, sometimes we'll open it up a little bit there. Okay. Now, 
You're going to go over one, under two for two rows. Making sure we don't twist it. So over one, under two, this is the first row. Okay, and then I'm coming in between that rim. And the basket. So the outer rim and the basket is where we're gonna put the design at. Here's two. So the second set then is gonna be over two, under one. And remember, if you need to get uh, your weaver, uh, your, your cane, your weaver wet, spray it off the basket, if you would, so that you're not getting your basket wet. Remember the bleed factor here. So that's over two for my second set. And... My third one is gonna be over three, over two. It's again in between the rim and the basket. So this one's gonna be over three, which would be great to do another double over the whole thing if I'm lined up right. And it looks like I am. So I'm gonna open up in between these stakes here and I'm gonna do Another double wrap, just because it's convenient. Sometimes when you get a double wrap in the design, it doesn't work. So there's no place to double wrap it. You're not at a good spot. You just keep going. And if you're having trouble threading this through here, you can always put it at a point. That helps. Open that up a little bit. Go around twice. Around everything now, and if you really want that to be tight and you're struggling with it, then just clip it for a minute. Have that hold it for you. Okay. So this is actually going to be um, it'll look like three on the inside. It'll only look like two on the outside. Take my weave right and open that up again. So if I take my weave right, stick it in there, and then I torque it to the side, it opens the hole up a little bit more. Hmm. Okay, so the next part of the design then is over two. So, and I'm still around the back. So that see that looks like it's over two there. And this is our over three to start with. This is over two. Or not, yeah, over, actually it's over three, double wrap. Okay, so this one now is over two, under one. Over two, under one. You see that? And we'll do that twice. Okay, so I need to have this, uh, the outside rim kind of loosen up a little bit for me. That's one of the reasons why I took that off. So I'm gonna undo this here, uh, that outer rim, just so it has some give for me to work. Once again, you want to make sure that you don't turn it. You want that shiny side of the cane out. And sometimes it just really does not want to do that.
So if you bring it out a little further and then kind of slide it in, that works better sometimes. And slide it back in. So and if you're having trouble tightening it up, you can always use a WeWrite to kind of move this over or I use an all a lot, a little finer. So I'm over to there and I'm working my way out, right? This time it's gonna be over one and under two. And as I come up here, I can see that I can, and you can clip this back here because it's done, okay, in case this gets to be a little shifty. Uh, I'm looking at my, uh, my next double wrap of the whole thing is gonna be about right there if I can make it work. So right now I am on my last over one under two. Bring all that over, tighten it up. Okay. So then if I look at my pattern, what does it tell me? Oh, it tells me that I've got an over two. All right. So that's not at a real good place to wrap that yet. So I'm going to bypass that. I'm still going to stick with the design, but it's just not a real good place for me to overwrap the whole thing. So I'm just going to do two here. And you can see that I did not do the whole thing. Okay. And so then I'm going to start with an under two. Around here. An under two over one. So it's the pattern, same pattern, but in reverse, basically. Okay. So it's under two over one for two rows. And if it is being persnickety and it does, does wants to curl, wants to turn, then bring it out. Okay, so there's my under two over one. Bring it out this way. So that it's straight like that and then bring it in. Why argue with it? If it's gonna be a pain, then more power to it. There's a way to fix it. So this, these two rows then is gonna be under one over two, under one over two, under one over two. See, it gets a little easier as you go. Okay, then this one is going to be over two, under one. Okay, so now you can see that I'm at a good place to grab that. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna stick with the pattern, but I would really like to put an over double wrap here. So on this one, what we're gonna do, we're gonna fudge a little bit and we're gonna stick it through there. And there is a lot of friction on this, so it doesn't hurt to make sure that you spray it. Okay. And I have some twists in here that I wanna take care of, some major twists. So if you hold it the way you want it and pull it through, more than likely it will straighten out, okay? So remember, this is a 
one that I want to go all the way around on. Oops. I'm going to want to go all the way around on. Same one around the back. And I'm still going to stay with the design in the front, whatever that is. And, and in this case, it's over two under one. Okay. But then I'm going to bring it back through here again and go around. And then I'll just continue with that design. Is this tedious? Oh yeah. But sure makes a very cool basket. And in my opinion, the neatest part about this particular basket, yeah, the dyed reed is cool, but it's the rim. It's the rim that makes it very awesome. So you see that I'm making sure I don't have any twists before I pull that through. Okay, so now I have two wraps on this back side, see? And I didn't throw my design off. So then I'm looking and seeing, okay, that's over two. What's my next one? Oh, it's under one, over two. And then we're back to just really having a good time. Okay. So I'm going to finish this off and then show you how it looks. And um, basically, this is just a whole lot of work all the way around. Hey, it's Jill. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and like our videos and subscribe. That way, you're always updated on anything basket related that we have on our Jill Shope Basketry channel. You won't miss a thing. Please like us and subscribe. See you next time.